We got here just at dusk at a campsite. Only seven out of 22 sites are filled and it's free thanks to Seattle City Light. And here is Boundary Dam. The tours are closed for yet another year, but the tour goes into that cavern. Kind of reminds me of uh, Stargate on TV where it shows Cheyenne Mountain. Well, that's pretty close to what it's like when you go in that tunnel right into the mountain and take the Boundary Dam tour. Whenever they open it back up, I highly recommend it if you come this far. And way up there on that sheer cliff on the right is a viewpoint. And then there's another one, if you can look closer, you see a little pedestal just below that, right on the cliff, looking down into the river below the dam. And when you're standing on that dam looking down, you realize how high it really is as it crosses this very steep and narrow gorge through the mountains. There's plenty of tent sites here scattered throughout the 22 camping sites. And this is free. So put this on your list if you ever come north of Spokane up to the Canadian border here it's uh, open 24 hours now I believe and you can stop here maybe do some fishing or paddling in the lake so we're camping here for a couple of days free kicking back relaxing and then we'll go check out the caverns Thursday and after that we might stay here another night or we might work our way back home. So, how you girls doing? Yeah, they just want to go roam, check everything out. Somebody killed a skunk here and I'm sure Sarah wants to find it and roll in it. Kate too. So we're going to walk a little farther to the other end of the campgrounds here and check out the boat launch and such. Well, the next morning turned out to be beautiful. I climbed up the little hill above my camp spot and just kind of gazed upon the campgrounds, upon the huge lake, and I could see the fog just coming off the lake as if it was a steam bath. The birds were waking, gritters were stirring just a beautiful setting 
in such a well-kept campground. Campgrounds are very neat, very well kept. There's potable water throughout the campgrounds. Garbage cans throughout. The place is kept very clean. There's even a original pioneer cabin that is a monument to the hardy pioneers of days gone by up here in the mountains. I got up and took off, wanted to go check out the park, see if it was open. And on the way, past many uh, upland marshes with plenty of beaver lodges and beaver dams. So beavers must be plentiful up here this far north. We then went back to our campsite, put out the awning and the chair, and poured myself a glass of wine and just relaxed with the girls. The next morning we got up and drove the 10 miles back into town to Middleline Falls for the cell service and to do a little exploring. Well, on the way down from Boundary Dam, we stopped in the little town of Medellin, went down to their uh, park, which is a very, very nice park for such a small little town. And I find that the uh, Vista House, I thought you could reach to by crossing the dam, if the dam was open for visitors, is not accessible that way. However, there are three other places along this track and we're going to backtrack from where the little yellow circle is to go up and hit a few lookouts and see if we can go to where the Vista House is looking down on the dam from above since we have all day. So we're going to do a little side trip here. Okay. On our way up to the uh, Boundary Dam Vista House we cross this river here and there's an ancient old, I'm sure it's a hydroelectric plant that probably serviced this area up here a long time ago before the Boundary Dam was created. So I'm going to walk over here to the bridge and take a look at it. Well, here we are looking down from the bridge at an old, very old hydroelectric facility here just outside of Middleton Falls. We'll go walk over here and look up the river a bit. You can look a ways up there. And then a bigger picture of the old structure here. Really something. You never know what you're going to find far up in the mountains in these little towns. It's really amazing. There's no name on this facility or postings or historical information at all. But it's just outside the town of Medellin Falls. I love finding little things like this along the roadway. It just adds to the excitement and enjoyment of the trip. Here's another look up the River Canyon. Really amazing. And here we have, if you can barely see them, wild turkeys that were in the road that are crossing into the woods. Kate sees them. Huh, Kate? There they go. A whole bunch of them. Well, we'll see what else we find up here. Here we are at the cutoff to the Boundary Dam Vista Point. So we're going to travel up this trail and see if we can get to the Vista House and show you guys the dam from far above it. Well, here we are. Parking lots right at the Vista House, which is really nice. No climbing or anything of the such. Well this is a treat. Last time I was here several years ago I was on a time crunch and couldn't get to this place. From the Boundary Dam campgrounds where we were to here was about uh, just under 30 miles. So let's go check this place out. This is really nice. <clears throat> they built the dam right inside of it in this very, very narrow area. 
we're going to walk down there to that little viewpoint there, overlook. And over at that, that far point, that's where we were camping, boat dock and all. So yeah, it's about a 30 mile drive around from there down the Medellin Falls and clear up to the point we are at here to the Vista House. Wow, I'd like to see James Bond go zooming down those wires and enter into there to blow the dam up as if it was some bad guy's place. But you can see this is quite the place. I'm excited, really. I like not being on a time schedule anymore. Let's go over here. Okay, we're gonna find the trail that goes down to that overlook so you can really get an idea of the dam. So let's continue. So here's the trail down to the Vista Overlook for a better view of the dam itself. And here we are to the overlook. This thing hangs right over the edge of the cliff. So if you have vertigo, I would caution you against this. So let's go out here and check this out. And you look down there. There's Canada. Hello, Canada. Just walk around here. Those are coming out of the dam. Turbines and stuff are all built inside this mountain. It's just like uh, I said, Stargate going into uh, Cheyenne Mountain. Well, this is the sense you'll have if you take this tour whenever they open it back up. And down here in this very narrow, steep gorge is Boundary Dam. They're down there working. People are just specks. We look up here and you can see the campgrounds of Boundary Dam. There's a boat dock and that. And then looking down the lake, which stretches, I believe, several miles. So let me get a wider view of this. There. Gives you some sense of this entire dam. The huge turbines and everything are built right inside the mountain. It's just amazing. The tour we took several years ago when it was open is just simply fascinating. Not to miss once they reopen it. Like I said, I think this would be a great place for a James Bond movie where he slides down those lines and sneaks in to the outlets to blow up the evil person's plan of world domination in this secret mountain hideout within a dam. So that's a long ways down. Standing on the dam looking down you think is way down there. This is even further. So anyway, take a look up here to the Vista house. I think what we're going to do now is we're not going to Canada. I didn't bring my uh, passport and all the other goodies you need nowadays. But we're going to head back down, maybe check a few things out if we can locate them. So to Boundary Dam we say hasta la vista and we'll see you later. So we travel back to our campsite to rest up for our next adventure exploring Gardner Cave. Well, I figure now is as good a time as any. If you enjoy the videos that I'm making, if you enjoy this video, hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment and hit the bell 
and the all bell so you'll get notified whenever I drop a new travel video. I'm trying to make my dog travel channel grow and it's a tight niche, I admit that, but hopefully there's enough of you dog lovers, solo travelers, and families that travel with their dogs that will join in and follow us along the road and find new places where you and your pooch can enjoy exploring and traveling. So hit that subscribe button and keep on watching.